What could be more typically British than this? A constable sky, flower-filled meadow, and a lovely old castle. But castles like this testify to a history of invasion and upheaval. The Celts, the Angles, the Saxons, the Vikings, the Romans, the Normans, and not forgetting the Jutes, have all made their mark on these shores. And recently, people from former colonies in Africa, Asia, and the West Indies have made their homes here. So what do we mean when we say, I am British? Are we really saying, I am a jute? That's what I'll be asking this week on Bellamy's People. Are you a jute? I'm the award-winning journalist, Gary Bellamy. For the last few years, I've been talking to the people of Britain on my award-winning phoning programme, Down the Line. OK, let's have another call, please. I've written a poem about fox hunting from the fox's perspective. BBC Three and Four, they're always in such small print. Red lines painted on the side of the road of the curb. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was high time I got out of my cosy little studio, made myself presentable for TV, got myself a Bellamy mobile, and actually spoke to you lot face to face as I meet Bellamy's people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We start our journey this week in Newcastle. I've come to the Royal Britannic Society to find out about the history of Great Britain. Because at one point they thought the world was square, didn't they? Square? I'm not sure. No, not. I don't think anyone ever thought the world was well, a square. cube. A cube. What a cube! Before, the, Who the, thought the world was a cube? They, people thought you would go off the edge of the horizon, didn't they? People believed that. Well, a long time ago. That some people thought it was flat. I mean, that's it, flat. Fascinating. I'm here with historian uh, Michael Dad. I was going to say British historian, but that would have been confusing, meaning either you are British or you study British history. <laughs> now, were we always called great? as in Great Britain because of our military history? No, no, it's, no. it's purely a, a, a geographical term. Mm. Uh, originally, a Greater Britain, differentiating it from Lesser Britain or Lesser Britannia, which, which was, of course, Brittany. Great Britain is, is the greater area, the greater land mass. It's absolutely nothing to do with us being great, great. as in, aren't we great, mm. we're British. No. It's such a marvellous view, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hotel yeah, management really student Julius Oliofemwi is equally passionate about the history and traditions of Britain. Yeah. The Houses of Parliament. What is so marvellous about this country as well is all of the, uh, the special awards and the, the social status. Mm. You know, it's lovely to think that in this country you could be a, a baron mm. or a marquess. Eh? Wouldn't it be such a lovely thing to be able to say to your mother and father, I become a Marquess of Shropshire. Just imagine that. The, the Earl of Broadstairs, eh? mm. the, the Duke of Reading, mm? Mm. the Viscount of Guildford. Mm. Isn't that marvellous? Yeah. And to me, that is what is the, the fabric of this country, what makes it such a lovely thing. Steve Goodall is an outspoken talk show host on a local radio station in the Midlands. I don't blame the blacks either, or the Irish. No, because that's exactly what I think. Yeah. I blame the left wing. Liberal so-called intelligence. We run this country down at every opportunity. Reprimanded for clipping a hooligan round the ear. What did I think we want the police to do? Everybody else knows we're great. Why don't we? It's not average Britain, is it? It's great Britain. Do you know what they forget about? Dunkirk. Right. Let's have another call, shall we? Steve. Hello. Gary. Nice to see you. Hello. Gary, hello, mate. Welcome right. to Middle England Radio. Right, this is where it all happens. This is where it? it happens, mate. This is where we are in touch with the best people in the world, mate. Right. Coventry, Birmingham, Derby, Nottingham, Peterborough. Best country in the world, best people in the world. I understand you have a, you write a column in a newspaper as well. In my humble opinion, it's all the fault of the Liberals. So what exactly is this programme about then, Gary? Well, it's about the people of Great Britain. I'm going to travel <laughs> around England and Great <laughs> Good Britain. Good luck with Ireland that, mate. You'll never get that commissioned. <laughs> No, we have. What, on Dave? Is he on one of the, uh, uh, the cable channels? No, we're doing You never get that away at the BBC, no, mate. No, it's not the BBC. We're doing it now. <laughs> they won't let you get a foot in the door with an idea. They're not interested in the British what, people. We're filming it now. Well, you've actually had it commissioned, have you? Yes. All oh, right. well, you know, good luck on your part. You know, good luck to you. But uh, one thing's for sure, they'll mm. never let you film somebody like me, a true English patriot. My views are unpopular. We, that's what we're, we're filming you now. You are mm. going to be on this programme. And whenever I was a small boy, as small as that, or even smaller, perhaps I was that small, mm. I was down there, okay? When I was down there, 
I was reading about the House of Parliament, I was reading about Her Majesty the Queen, Did I was reading about the British history. So I've known it, even since, even before I could speak. When I was, when I was sucking my mother's nipple in my mouth, okay, mm. and drinking my mother's milk, and the milk was running down the okay. side, mm. eh? I was thinking to myself, my goodness me, what a lovely tradition the British have. So where does the name Britain come from? From Diodorus. Right. And could you just explain to the people at home who Diodorus was, just in case they don't know who he or she was? Yes, well, uh, Diodorus was a Greek traveller, and his writings are the earliest extant work in which the Britons are named. Mm. Um, although, of course, they were actually called Britons, and Britain is his Greek rendering of, 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 of that. Right. It's very interesting, actually, that the Britonic term Prithin is, is very similar to the geodelic uh, word Brithin. OK, look, let's forget about the Prithins and the Driverins and all those people, and let's get on to when Great Britain became a United Kingdom. Which was when? In the Middle Ages. 1707. Oh, really? As late as that? Well, I'm saying this is one of the key dates from British history. Mm. This is one of those dates that should be as well known as the, as the ever popular 1066. This is the forging of Great Britain. You can't dictate to everyone and say you must all know this date. You know, we all choose that. We it's all have. It's not dictating to people to expect them to know just a little bit about their own history. But you seem to be jealous of 1066, like the ever popular 1066. You're jealous of 1066. You're angry I'm about the to date. You're tears by it. Hello, Hello Queen my love. love. How are you? I'm all right today, thanks, darling. What are the strawberries like? Oh, they're delicious. Look, 50 paper oh, they make. Yeah. Linda Darling works in Deptford Market, in one of the most culturally diverse parts of Britain. Hello, uh, love. Linda. Hello. Hello. Oh, Gary oh, Bellamy. This is Gary. Hello. Hello. Gary, you're the silly bar. <laughs> oh, I listen to your radio show. Oh, okay. You're all right, Billy Barker. Uh, thank you. Is you handsome? Well, thank oh, you very I'm much. I'm never expecting that. <laughs> no. I wouldn't kick you out of bed for parking. <laughs> yeah. So, very early start for you, isn't it, in the morning, oh, yeah. in the market well, trade? I get up early. Yeah. With the birds. Yeah, do you? Yeah, I do. What time do you kind of knock off? You're what time? so handsome, <laughs> isn't you? Well, so I don't knock off. You know, about four or five o'clock, yeah. you know, yeah. everybody's going home. Right. Get myself a scotch and coke, settle down in front yeah. of EastEnders. Oh, no. Nice. Of the day. It's, yeah. like, it's very much like EastEnders, isn't it? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a silly bark, yeah. isn't <laughs> It's great to meet some young people and uh, hear your opinions and views on, uh, on modern Britain. Um, can I ask, do you like being British? Are you proud to be British? Who's proud? Put your hands up if you're proud to be British. Right, does that mean you're not proud to be British? Put your hands up if you're not proud to be British. Put your hands up if you're indifferent. Put your hands up. I think people of my generation, certainly, we... We, we love the whole idea of England as it was in the 50s, you know, the corner shop, the village green, you know. Cambridge, Cornwall, all those things. I mean, look at this place, though. It's absolutely marvellous. Yeah. With the sun glittering on the water, the boats, all I mean, these stones. It's not changed for hundreds of years. No. Um, can't we go back? If I was a mm. one-eyed, mm. black, disabled, lesbian, Muslim, mm. they'd be beating me door down and get, so have your own show, you know. So, Steve, how many shows on the BBC have you seen fronted by a black, disabled, Muslim, lesbian? Gary, the problem that people like I have in this country, mm. in my country, right, is we haven't got a voice. The liberal, trendy, lefty media is, you know, it's, they've got it sewn up. All these university types with their mm. Guy friends and their, I don't know, holiday homes in Tuscany. What's wrong with Skegness? Hey, you know? But you say that, you say about the media, it's all left wing. What about the Daily Telegraph, the Times, the Daily Mail, the, the Express? What about these newspapers? What about radio DJs like John Gaunt, Nick Ferrari? What about, what about Jeremy Clarkson? The problem these is, are all... the people like me in this country, yeah. we haven't got a voice. But you've got your own radio show. The good thing about Britain is what I love, everybody comes here. Yeah. You know, you turn round there, it's like the Congo, you turn round there, it's like the Isle of Wight. You've yeah. got everything. And but, I love that. Because a lot of people don't like that, do they? A lot of people don't no, like the fact... No, they have got a problem with mm. it, but more fool them, I say. Mm. More fool them. We want a little bit of a kaleidoscope, don't we? Yeah. A bit of a kaleidoscope. Do you want a tomato? 
OK. I mean, right. presumably, you know some of the popular dates from our French campaigns. Battle of Agincourt, for instance. Mm. Yeah. Of course. So, are you, are you going to entertain us with a stab at it? Well, um, I think, well, everyone knows the date. Everyone knows Battle of Agincourt. It's one of yeah, those... Yes, most people do. It's one of those dates everyone knows, like 1066. Oh, 1066 seems to be the only date you know. We've got everybody, haven't we? Yeah. We've got Vietnamese, yes. we've got Bangalore, we didn't depop. Yeah. We've got Germanics and Judies, we've got everybody. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't like travelling, but I love meeting people. And let's face it, I'm not going to go to the North Pole, am I, and meet an Eskimo? No. But I might meet one here who wants to buy a banana. Do you see? Yeah. This is called I Am Not a Racist. Mm. Like most people without any black friends, I am definitely not a racist. In the Thai, I say hi as they bring me some Tom Kha Gai. In the Chinese, I say please and keep clumsy comments between my knees. But my Indian takeaway, I bring my travel knowledge into play and say, I would love to go to Bombay. The waiter laughs and says, my family is from Jaipur and gives me a heated towel. I think I'll have a pizza tomorrow. Bombay's called Mumbai now. Bombay? It's called Mumbai? Mm. Is it? Fee, fee, four, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Gary Bellamy? Yes. Yeah? Bryn. Bryn, Bryn Tablo. Yes, yeah, nice to meet all you. Right, all right, Yeah, fine, thanks. Yeah, you want to come in? Oh, yes, please. You English? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, you can't then. See, yeah. I've had this put in to stop you lot coming in, coming in by you. Really? Is that? Is no, I'm only joking, man. Are you, laugh at you? Are you English? Yes. Get out. Get out of my bloody street. Get out. No, I'm only joking. I'm only having a laugh with you. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, That's right. not really to keep the English out. Of course it's not. Keep the bloody dog in. Oh. Battle of Agincourt. I reckon that's 15 something. 15, 12. 14, 15. I wasn't far off. You were 100 years off. OK, this is going well, isn't it? There's more castles, right, on the English-Welsh border than anywhere else in the world, right? They crush this bloody country, that one. And then you look, at, you look around at them, right? Mm. They're, they're, not, they're not even English. They're Anglo, Anglo-Saxon, right? We're the real bloody English. We are. OK, but... Right? So if you hate the English, that means you hate yourself. You t no, see, so you're twizzling that around now, see? No. I'm saying the Gaelic people are, are what they call the original Britons, right? Right. So do you consider yourself English, of course, real be, English, or don't Welsh? Be, don't be fucking daft, because I don't fucking call, consider myself English. <laughs> you and just said I'm, you did. You're twizzling, you see? <laughs> no, you are. You're bloody eye. You're twizzling around now, right? Right. OK? I'm Welsh, yes. right? Remember this proverb? It's very, very simple. Mm. And we have this in my country. You have it in your country also. You never know what you've got until it's gone. Yeah. Hmm? I've heard that. You never know what you've got mm. until it's gone. Mm. Eh? Yeah. Well, what's going? The traditions of the British society. I think we're still keeping hold of them. You know, you know, the, the Jubilee in 2002 was huge. It was a huge event. I watched that on the television. Mm. And the one thing I noticed, they were playing all sorts of uh, foreign music. There was no Morris dancing. There was British music. Brian May was on top of the palace playing God Save the Queen. What uh, could be more British than that? And uh, how long was he doing that? For about two and a half minutes. There you go. Winston Churchill would be disgusted with you. Brian May should be paying for an hour. Three hour. But, Five hour. <laughs> ten hour. Brian May should be playing until he can't even stand up. Brian May should be collapsing on the ground, uh, uh, crying in pain, asking them, please, I can't play no more. Eh? And the policeman should come and kick him in the head. Get up. Are you British or not? Oh, I'm an English patriot, Gary. I'm not interested in black people. I don't mind them. I say good luck to them. You know, they're proud of their heritage. Good on them. Don't forget, Gary, where we live. Mm. You know where we live, don't you? You know what yeah. this country's called, don't you? Yeah, Great Britain. England. Great Britain, Gary. That's it. You said it. Look. Mediocre Britain or rotten no. Britain or old tired old saggy Britain. Great Britain. When when Henry V or whoever it was came up with the, what are we gonna call it? Great Britain. No, actually I think you'll find it's called Great Britain because it's about it's the greater mass, it's Great Britain, it's the land mass. It doesn't mean great as in great, it's just great as the big thing. You know, look, 
the French call us, well, they call us uh, Grand Breton, whatever they call it. The, mm. the Germans call us uh, Grass Britain. You know. But it all means the they, same thing, Grand Yeah, but what I'm saying, Gary, is even they know that we're great. They think yeah. we're great. No, Why don't we of, think we're great the anymore? The country Can you great. imagine, Gary, the union... There's been a lot of fuss lately, hasn't there, about should we celebrate St George's Day? Yes. I can't think for a moment why we should. This old idea, we've got patron saints for different countries. Mm. Isn't that a farce? I mean, you, I, I bet you, you don't know half the patron saints of any other countries in the world. Only Wales? Uh, Ethiopia. Have they got one? Yeah. Have they? Right, well, what about Lithuania? Um, I don't know. Have they? they... No. No. Well, no, they have. Have they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Russia? They, well, they have. They must have. Yeah. Yeah. Port yeah. Portugal? Yeah. But you must... don't know who their patron saints no, are. No. Uh, they fervently celebrate them. Uh, 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 Greece. You've probably been on holiday to Greece. I've been to Greece. Well, who's the patron saint of Greece? I don't well, know. You know, ironically, the patron saint of Greece was born in Turkey, Nicodemia in Turkey. Right. <laughs> They're age-old enemies. Oh. Palestine. Now, at least the Palestinian uh, patron saint actually died in Palestine. Mm. Wasn't um, from Palestine. But do you know what? What? The patron saint of all those countries is St George. Really? Yes, the same. Bloody same for a lot of them. Australian Nicky Ambrose runs his own chain of cocktail bars and has very strong views on the English. What is the ambition in this country? I mean, what do you want to do? What's your ambition? Oh, I want to be on TV. Yeah, I want to be on telly. Yeah, then what? Well, um, hopefully we'll make a programme... Yeah, that's... then what? Well, you'd make a programme... That's... Yeah, and then what? Well, something that would sell around the world and then hopefully come in years on, to come mate. generations will watch. Listen, I employ over 400 people. They go back to their houses and say, look, we've got this. I employ people, look. You don't employ these people. These people are employed by the BBC. Another dying corporation propped up by an illegal licence fee. It's not illegal. Of course it's illegal. You've got to pay for that drivel. Drivel? Every... Hang on. It's nonsense. The BBC mm. makes the best television programmes in the world. Hello, Nicky Ambrose. What's the news? Respect, me love that all the way. Listen, me love that, respect, yeah, history. Me love that, yeah. I love the history of England, right? Mm. Cause let me tell you this, uh, English man know, them guy in India, India man come up, make them nice, you know what I'm talking about? I'm no, no, no. English man says, shut up, you nice Indian boy, I'm thump you know, you net. We are on team, yes or so, right? Yeah. Same thing, China man, chat yeah. them shit, you know. In England, man, say, shut up, you mouth, China, yeah. man. One top cut in them neck, eh? Make him shut up. Are we on things just as so? England, man, reach in a Scotland, eh? The Scotch boy, come on, make them nice, you know. How do you hold, how do you hold, how do you hold them go on? England, man, say, shut up, you mouth, Scotch boy. Get over the wall. Mm. Kick him in the neck, you know? Yeah. I say, are we on things just as so, so? Eh? This is strictly England, strictly yeah. marriage dance in a go on in this area, yeah? Yeah. Let me tell you something now, right? Enough man don't want to know this, you know. No. But England man. Yeah. Rule the world. Mm. Because England man are the biggest vicious killer. In the hurt. In the what? In the hurt. In the herd. In the hurt. I mean, your immigration policy is literally like come in, take my trousers down, slap me on the ass, take whatever you want, and then turn the light off before you leave. Oh. Please come over, well, yeah, we've got a house, sleep 16 people. It's pathetic. It's not like that. Immigrants had a lot of society. I mean, you're an immigrant. You've added a lot to society here. Hello? Yeah, I've already spoken about this to Mark. Well, you can go home if you want. Ah, right. Uh-huh. Right. Did you fuck her? Oh, yeah? Jesus. Always the quiet ones, mate, isn't it, yeah? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, kid. See you later. Ah, Jesus. Yeah. What are you doing? I've just got a text. Who's it from? Uh, it's a picture from Michaela, my girlfriend. Michaela? She's at the zoo. She took her nephew to the zoo to see some animals. What are you, some kind of pussy? Hmm? I've got a text from Michaela. She's at the zoo with her nephew. Don't let her send you shit like that. I asked Sam Maitland what her views on immigration were as a Christian. I've thought about this a lot and I think if you invite somebody into your house, mm. then you have to give them a very warm welcome. Mm. And I think we either have to make our welcome a lot warmer or we have to be 
a little bit more disciplined about who we invite into our house. And at the moment, I think we're getting both things wrong. So I suppose it's a little bit like at Christmas when you invite an uncle over mm. and he's just got remarried to like a younger wife and they've got new children. <laughs> and it's a bit awkward, you know, we don't really know because they don't get on with the other side of the family. The trouble got with your analogies, goose. you see, is you get into an awful tangle because I don't know about this particular uncle or this particular young wife or indeed the children. Well, he's about 50 and he, he used to work in the, uh, in the carpet warehouse before he got made, oh, yes. made redundant. It's not, everyone wants wooden floors these days. And uh, he's um, basically had a terrible falling out with, with his brother over some, well, someone died in the family and his wife took all the Chinese furniture from him. I just can't get involved with this uncle because I, I nor, don't Nor can the family, is. and that's why it's annoying that he's turned up at this party. What's he invited? I think he's bipolar, you know, he disappears. But he's not an immigrant, is he? No. So how is he helping our discussion? To be honest with you, to tell you the truth here, yeah, we didn't even want to come here as Pakistanis, we didn't want to come here. Mm. You know, so, so, so what if you've got, you know, education and that? So what if you can get Nintendo? So what if you can drive a car? So what if you've got flashy stuff? So what if you get mobile phones? So what if you get free housing? So what if you get doll money? So what if you get free hospitals? So mm. so what if you get all of that? We mm. didn't want to be here, yeah? We want, we'd we much rather be in, uh, like uh, Pakistan and that, ain't it? Well, what's there? What can you get there? It's like hotter than that, isn't it? Be honest with you, though, girl. Right. I don't like them. All right? You know? I just don't like them, right? I don't have to like them, do I? Do you know what I mean? Where does it say I have to like them? I don't like them, mm. all right? They come over here, you know what I mean? They're not part of this country, they're not part of our history, they're a different colour, aren't they? they? You know, different... They've got a different way of life, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, you know, I, I don't like them. Smell some of them. No, like, I don't think you should be saying. They cause a lot of trouble. Don't think you should be saying this. What? What do you mean? What? You should be saying things like that. Well, I can't talk about squirrels like that. Ah! Squirrels. <laughs> yeah. See, you thought I was talking about packies, didn't you? You. That makes yeah. you. That makes you a racist. Yeah. What you thought, right? You thought. Yeah. But I was talking Wait. about squirrels. Let's not fuck about, mate. I done you up like a kipper there. Yeah, yeah. I done you. Mm. I done. I done him there. Didn't I? I done you. He did. I done you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> no, I done you. Mm. I done you yeah, right yeah. up. I done you. Mm. I done you there. Yeah, he did. I done you. I done you. All right, you done me. I done you. Yep, you done me. I done so, you right yeah. up, mate. Yeah. Let's talk I about, done you. Do you want to talk about something? I done you. Done him there. Yeah. I done you right up. I done you right up. Done me. I done you right up. Done me right up. I done you right up. I done you right up. I done you. I done you, you little girl. Right. I done you Come right on, up. Gone far too long. You done <laughs> I done you, mate. I get the gist. I done you. I done you. I done you. What I'm trying to say is, is that the immigrants are a bit like my uncle. I think you've got the, to the uncle I'm talking down about. With your uncle. What? Not my uncle. The uncle. You've not got my. You've got to get bogged down with him. No, not my uncle. I'm talking so about. So I can't get involved with your uncle because I don't know him. Okay, well let's forget the uncle and get into another analogy. Oh, must we? Well, you started it. Did I? Yeah, about to tell me about people to come in. Oh, but that's quite straightforward. Your analogies are much more tortuous than mine. Well, hang on a minute. What about a party and you invite people to come, but you get gate crashers? Well, that's quite another thing, isn't it? Because they really weren't invited. No. That's quite cut and dried. Then I say, then out they go. They weren't off. So gate crashers at parties should be put into detention centres? No. No. Because gate crashers at parties aren't illegal immigrants. What if some of them are? Ah, there he is. Pablo. Pablo Conscious arrived in Britain from Jamaica in the 1960s and has had problems with the authorities ever since. Step forward. Step forward. Yeah, look at this. Wow. All right. This is good. You built all this yourself. So. Are you, would you consider yourself British? Some are the one <coughs> that are chosen. Some are the infidel. Only some can come through the street. And one side is Scylla, and the other side is Charybdis. The whirlpool and the monster. Only Argonaut reach through, because Tethys shall guide them. Like when I reach to Ramsgate's stupid little custom wire, give me lyrics, mm. lyrics the Gargan. 
in the passport section. Mm. Well, let's try one, another couple of dates, shall we, Mr. Bellamy? This is fun. The Spanish Armada, where we managed to prevent the Spanish from invading, and thus we speak English today and not Spanish. Have a stab at that one. 1492. 1588. Right. Signing of the Magna Carta, absolutely crucial date, the founding of British democracy. 1215. No. All right, yes, you've got that one right. right, but it was a lucky stab, wasn't it? We did it in school. Well, there we are. I am not completely despairing. No. You filled me with the modicum of hope. Yes, I knew, I remembered a number. I remember, well done me, I remembered a number. I mean, I'll leave it with you, Gary Bellamy. Mm. This is a dying nation. It's finished, you're a dead duck. And do you know who's picking up the pieces? Who? We are. The Australians. We're over here, mate. We're doing it. I mean, how can you sit there without getting angry? You're so wet. There's nothing to be angry You're nothing. At. You're a part of a dying nation. Drink that. I'm OK. I ah, just drink it, mate. It's, it's a bit too strong. It's a bit too strong for me. Have a drink. Drink it down, mate. It won't kill you. It's like a baby. <laughs> How was that, mate? You like that? <laughs> Now, stay after me. Oh, oh God, weak. no. I'm part of a dying nation. Say it. No, that's... Say I am weak <coughs> and I'm part of a dying nation. No. <coughs> Say it. No. Listen to me. I am weak and I'm part of a dying nation. No, Say it. You're hurting me. I am weak. I am weak. No. I am weak. I am weak. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm weak. I'm... I'm part of a dying nation. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm part of a dying nation. I'm part of a dying nation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel better? Yeah. I can name every English monarch since William the Conqueror in order. Yes. Well, I can name every single Doctor Who from William Hartnell in order. Willy, Willy, Harry, Stee, Harry, Dick, John, Harry, three. One, two, three. Ned's Richard, two. Harry's four, five, six. Then who? Edward four five, Dick the Bad, Harry's Twain, and Ned the Lad. The frog land on the head. Quack, 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 quack. That be a sign to all of the little animal out there. And them look upon the sound and feed from there, mm. moving forward to righteousness. The big... Never before have the Maccabee controlled the world, the whole of nature. And that's what they want. Mm. I didn't get whether so you so we're not British. We're we're all part of the same thing. Is that what you're trying to say? Let me sing a song together to celebrate the unity of nature, the vitality, mm, okay. vitality of love. My parents came to Wales once, and they were very you know the people the Welsh, the Welsh are very cold towards the English. You you find that quite a lot, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> you find that quite a lot. Well, I don't believe that at all. Oh, on, an can be cold. on an individual basis, especially in the valleys, we're very friendly. Up there, North Wales. Like yes. that, they talk like that. Then mm. I don't like them. Is there a not? There is a North. I don't like North right? Wales. No. I don't like Mid Wales. I don't really like people in Swansea that much. And you don't like the English? No. Well, how are you on the Scots and the Irish? <laughs> so you kind of just like yourself. Yeah, I suppose it really. Yeah. Is. Well, at least I know what I like. Yeah. But Edward VIII preferred his wife. George VI then did arrive, and Lizzie too is still alive. OK. William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton, John Pertwee, Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Paul McGann, Krista Eccleston, David Tennant, and Matt Smith, who's, who I don't agree with. The British people are a diverse and fascinating bunch. But have we changed as a society? That's what I'll be finding out next week on Bellamy's People of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Hi, if you're anything like me, you probably enjoy the making of documentaries more than the programmes themselves. So for more Bellamy's People of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, digital viewers should press red now. The relationship between Whitehall and Number 10 has long been a battle for supremacy. It's completely detached from the real world. Somebody remove this pestilent beast. Our reputation was in shreds. It reminded me of a Soviet psychiatric hospital. In a new season, BBC Four gets inside the corridors of power and meets the people who've called the shots and pulled the strings.
starting Monday at 9. Now, Newsnight on BBC.